Katie, the suspect apparently works here at a Milwaukee restaurant and was headed back to where he lives in Chicago and using the Greyhound bus and left the intermodal station right behind me. I'm told by U.S. Customs that he was deported as recently as 2012. A trip to Chicago quickly turned into a nightmare. Listen to the dispatchers describe the chaos from 911 callers on board Greyhound bus 4937. The 17 made statements when he showed the gun that he was going to kill everybody on the bus when they got to Chicago. Confusion was piled on when the bus driver did not stop for miles. I know it sounds rather hard to wrap our mind around how do you not know you're being pulled over. Uh, I think he ultimately recognized that this was um, a serious event when we spiked his tires. His tires became flat, or at least two of them did, and he rolled into the state of Illinois where he finally came to arrest. The driver apparently did not know about all the commotion in the back of the bus, which did not surprise this rider today. You know, it's not like the airport. There isn't metal detectors or anything like that. A Greyhound spokesperson tells me they are definitely investigating why the bus driver did not stop immediately, and the driver remains out of service while they investigate. The suspect, 33-year-old Margarito Vargas Rosas, appeared in Illinois court this weekend. He's being held without bond. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection confirmed today Vargas Rosas went back to his home country of Mexico five times between 2004 and 2012. The first at his own choice from California. The others involved run-ins with the law. The Racine County District Attorney is deciding whether to charge him with making terroristic threats a felony. History has taught us that when these types of things happen, they typically get charged in the United States and they're found guilty. They serve time here in the prison system and then ultimately they end up getting deported. We are working to find out more on each of the cases that removed the suspect from the U.S. In the two cases in 2012, he was fully deported. And when that suspect may be extradited back here to Wisconsin and Racine County to face that possible felony charge. Reporting live outside the Milwaukee Intermodal Station, Julia Fellow, today's TMJ4.